What's going on everyone? Got a brand new Netflix movie review today, and today I'm discussing David McKenzie's new film, Outlaw King. Outlaw King is a true David versus Goliath story of how the great 14th century Scottish outlaw king Robert Bruce used cunning and bravery to defeat and repel the much larger and better equipped occupying English army. Now this film stars Florence Pug, Aaron Taylor Johnson, and Chris Pine, and like I said, it was directed by David McKenzie, the guy who brought us Hell or High Water. It was actually my favorite film of that year when it had come out, so I was really dying to see this movie. I know at some of the festivals it was getting mixed reviews and mixed scores and whatnot because I guess it was two and a half hours long, but the version I saw, they cut out 30 minutes and it was only an hour and 57 minutes. I gotta personally say though, I don't get the hate for Outlaw King. I did get some of the criticism for Outlaw King, but overall I thought in Outlaw King was a pretty entertaining watch. I thought it was brutal, it was bloody, and just the way that David McKenzie films all the action set pieces, again, a lot of them are all kind of filmed the same way. There's nothing like special or unique that you're going to get from the Raid movies or the John Wick films, but as a standout like hack and slash film when you're taking this place, like right after Braveheart, this is like the best double feature, Outlaw King does show that brutality and that the cunningness and the bravery and their stealthiness, it just, they are brutal. And the action sequences, you feel every punch hit kick stab you feel it and it gets you to the point where you're gripping your hands going ooh, ah and you're making these noises because you're like that is gruesome but i dig it and that is very realistic with what's going on and i think david mckenzie did capture that style of essence within this time with that brutality with that blood and gore and it really worked for the tone of the movie it wasn't overly gross it just fit perfectly with an outlaw king plus might i say it, if you're still on that point where you say oh chris pine's just captain kirk I, I think you're missing out on that this is one of the first roles where i really saw chris pine as not himself but playing the character robert the bruce he transformed into this character and it wasn't because of his physical transformation it was the way that he portrayed him his accent the mannerisms that he brought about himself it didn't look like pine anymore it really just felt like robert the bruce and this was one of the first roles that i've seen him in truly because he's always been a good actor but i think this role elevated him to greatness and aaron taylor johnson i mean this guy is a chameleon i think he's one of the most underrated chameleons with it when it comes into the hollywood films because he transforms into this character again as well as douglas and he's just powerful and i could totally see david mckenzie was having a blast getting a lot of the reaction shots out of aaron taylor johnson he's a maniac in the battlefield and when you get some of these one shots on just his face it is just awesome it always peek into the background if you can find aaron taylor johnson he looks bloodthirsty and it fits for his character and what's going on with his personal story let's say florence plug in here who plays the female protagonist in here who is married to the outlaw king himself i really enjoyed her character i thought she has great charisma to her and i actually wanted a bit more of her which which actually this is what brings me to one of my cons with the film is it does feel a little bit surface level for all the characters in here yes you do care about robert the bruce because he is the main character and if you don't really know much about his history beforehand you're not going to really know much about go going into this movie you don't really learn much about it just within the battles that's really all you get and his struggling that with only having 50 men and having to build an army with that aspect but the reason is, is that it did feel a little bit surface level with all these characters. And I'm curious to see what that two and a half hour runtime film was because a lot of the story elements feel missing. This film is very fast paced now. It's not as meandering as some of the critics were saying beforehand when it was coming out at the festivals. And I do think it's because they took out those moments. And I wonder what is missing. I really want to see that cut of the film because... I, I really am curious to see what story elements are missing. Because again, like I said, there are elements I feel like that are missing from the relationship that Robert the Bruce has with his wife in here, where at first they don't see eye to eye on certain things and that they're forced to be married, but then all of a sudden they fall in love and I wanted a little bit more dynamics between them. Not just because of certain elements that got them together or per se his relationship with his brothers, because to be honest, he had so many brothers, I didn't, I lost track of when they were dying. You don't know which one's gonna die and I kind of lost track of who was what and who was where and who this guy and how he relates to him and I just felt like it was moving so fast that it felt choppy in the editing and in a sense it did get you to the battles faster it got you to the main purpose of the film faster but I think it restricted the storytelling developments that I think David McKenzie is very well known for within Hell or High Water which is one of the big reasons I love Hell or High Water is because it's not just about the action it's about the story that it's telling it's about its characters and I'm curious to see if I would still be feeling the same way or if I watched that two and a half hour version if I was going hey you should probably chop some of that stuff out and make it just faster paced film maybe i'm totally wrong i'm just going about of what i would have liked to see in the film more because some of the editing does feel choppy some of the character developments do feel choppy and a lot of the characters are one-dimensional but again it is a very entertaining movie 
I think Outlaw King is bloody gorgeous. The, I mean, it's like an Animal Planet documentary who's filmed throughout this movie because he does use natural lighting, and that is a very risky thing for a cinematographer to use, but it worked in here. The natural lighting works, and it fits perfectly within the movie. A lot of the dialogue fits. The performances are great. It's bloody brutal battles. And if you want to see these battles, if you want to see these actors kicking some butt, if you just want to escape into the Scottish lands of people battling and killing each other over what is right and what is wrong, this is the film for you. It's coming out on Netflix. If you can find it in the theater, I definitely recommend seeing it in the theater because of the audio, because of the look of the film. It does deserve to get seen in a theater, but if you can't find one, Netflix is the next best route to find it at. So the all said, I'm going to give Outlaw King a B minus. I mean, guys, what are you guys' thoughts on Outlaw King? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Let's talk about it down below in the comments and tell me this. Do you really think Braveheart is the best double feature to watch right before this? Let's talk about it down below in the comments. But guys, of course, if you guys are new here, hit up Sandwich on Films also down below because right down there you guys can get into advanced movie screens. Even check out some movie news and even some movie reviews. And if you're new here, why not hit that like and subscribe button so you guys never miss out on any videos. But, guys, thank you guys so much for watching this video. And, of course, until next time, stay classy.